I welcome you all on this Moksh Academy a PG Career Series session. In this COVID world, have to you know conduct these online sessions. Uh, but traditionally, we have been you know training students for the USMLE and the licensing examinations, and for the you know informative uh, you know awareness, we used to actually do uh, in-person sessions across India. So you know thanks to COVID, now we are completely online. But yes, uh, happy to help you in this entire uh, journey. All right. So I'm your host today, uh, Chirag, and I'm going to you know run through this entire conversation today with our guest. Uh, today's session is something kind of an insider info, or you know, a kind of a, a glimpse to what exactly is a journey of somebody just like you in a medical school in India. How did he actually, you know, overcome uh, possible obstacles? So we are proud and, uh, you know, happy to have uh, somebody uh, from your fraternity, uh, Dr. Jinendra Lalit Satya. He is very much from Bombay. He completed his MBBS from the prestigious uh, Grand Medical College, uh, JJ Group of Hospitals. So just like you, you know, he had his dream to, you know, pursue a U.S. residency. He further went on to do his MD in internal medicine from University of Miami, subsequently moved to NYC where he is a chief medical resident for New York Medical College. And currently he is pursuing his advanced hepatology fellowship at the prestigious Beth Israel Tikonis Medical Center, a teaching hospital of the Harvard Medical School in Boston. His interest includes medical education, hepatology, and gastroenterology. So I welcome uh, Dr. Satya on behalf of the entire student community. So thank you very much, uh, doctor, to be part of this session. Any opening remarks, you know, before we start this power pack questions uh, for you? Thanks so much, Virag. It's a pleasure to be here and talk to young students and uh, hopefully provide them uh, insight and answer questions which uh, can be useful to them in their uh, decisions uh, along this uh, long but rewarding journey. What are the three red flags in the profile which can actually hamper students' ability to match into a residency program? Yes, um, I think, you know, uh, an attempt on an exam, like if you fail one of the exams, you know, having said that, I have colleagues, I know people who had an attempt on step one, had an attempt on step two CS, uh, but they matched. But you know, if you have an attempt on on your uh, step, unfortunately, it is a red flag. You know, it's important to note that there's no black and white. You know, it's a gray zone. People with attempts also match. But talking about the overall picture and the number of interviews you get, you know, if you have an attempt, you'll most likely be filtered out of a lot of programs to begin with. You know, programs get a lot of applications into thousands. They don't have the time to go through every one. So they'll put in a filter, and if you have with a score cutoff, for example, or if you have a, or if you have an attempt, they will, uh, you know, that's you. You get you get uh, uh, checked out right off of the bat. So you don't even proceed in in uh, towards getting an interview. Secondly, I would say uh, red flag is I think I mentioned before is lack of your interest in a specialty, and that's gleaned through your CV. So let's say you're applying to medicine but you haven't really done anything in internal medicine you maybe did something in pediatrics or you did something in surgery in terms of your research or your other activities you know that's not going to help you of course nothing goes to waste everything is good in application but the other person will be thinking you know if this guy is interested in medicine why is he doing research in surgery for example so you know it's very hard to sell a product when you cannot you know vouch for it and when so if they ask you in the interview why are you why are you interested in medicine and you know you try to come up with a story but the person is listening to your story and looking at your cv and he can clearly see that you're not you know you're just saying something because for the fact of saying it but so the way you demonstrate interest in your cv is not by saying something in your personal statement that's not you know how it works because the personal statement is abstract you know no one checks as to what you've really done so you could technically write whatever you want on your personal statement 
So the way they really know if you're interested in their field is by your CV. So there are things that you need to put in your CV and do for your CV, which show that you're interested and someone who, you know, who will be a good asset for them in that specialty. Um, and I think the last thing I would mention with the red flag, and I think I spoke already about this, is the personal statement. Because I, I don't think, you know, because coming from India and honest with you, I may not even have had the same uh insight seven years ago you know how important the personal statement is and you know we talk about this every day amongst colleagues you know if you have a really badly written personal statement you know you're not going to get an interview so i think a badly written personal statement which has a lot of grammatical errors or does not have a good story of the english is poor is a red flag very very important insight students please make a note of it you know uh, see, that's what happens, you know, when you are actually uh, speaking and, you know, discussing from the experience, uh, you know, that actually uh, is going to help you a lot. So next question, uh, you know, for you, doctor, amongst yourself, your colleagues, your friends, on an average, how many interviews do you feel are required for a successful uh, residency match? Yes. Um, so, you know, the way I like to put it is you need only one interview to match. You know, if you have one interview and you ace the interview, you'll match. But of course, all of us feel more comfortable with having more interviews, you know, through the season. Um, so there's no there's no golden number as to how many interviews are required, you know, because like I said, every individual's application is different. You should never be comparing your application with your friend or your colleague. It's very natural to do that. But if you do that, you should know that, you know, you should not feel happy or depressed or either way based on how many interviews your friend is getting versus you are getting you know because everyone has different stories different scores different applications so i don't think it's fair to compare um so i would stay away from that um you know having so if you really would put me on the spot and say how many interviews are needed i would say you know anything above five is is generally good you know of course if you're closer to ten that also helps but you know i i would really stress on the fact that you know you need only one interview to match and once you get an interview there's a lot of preparation that should happen on your end and if you ace that interview you know you will match at the program i completely second that you know during my journey for the last 10 years i've been you know mentoring students you know helping with the match and i completely agree there have been instances where uh, with one single interview two interviews still you know people have cracked it because they knew it's now or never so they give best of their you know uh, abilities and uh, finally they could succeed so yes i completely agree even one interview can actually uh, give you that success all right so next of course question is you know again uh, amongst yourself your colleagues your friends how many era season participation is required for a successful match because obviously you know it might happen that you might not get matched at the first attempt what do you have to say about that right yes so you know as i mentioned everyone's story is different i know colleagues who've applied two times three times and a match at the fourth time uh, i myself was fortunate to match the first time for my residency but uh you know if you don't match the first time you know of course you you feel disheartened you're disappointed uh, you know, you wonder if this is ever going to click for you. But the important thing is, you know, to take a moment, step back and investigate what went wrong and learn from your mistakes so that you can improve your application in the next uh, six to nine months and give yourself a better chance at applying. So, you know, to answer the question, as I said, you know, people, I know people who've matched the fourth time versus matching the first time. Perfect. So again, uh, you know, the, that typical mentality that if I don't get into the first time, I will drop my US family plan. That should not be the plan of action. That is just the message which I wanted to kind of convey. So uh, as you can see, uh, doctor has mentioned, you know, people have four and fifth attempt as well. So appreciate uh, the answer.